on Arsenal Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Giles. On tonight's show, my guest and I will be reviewing our pre-season and previewing our upcoming 2024-25 campaign. And remember to check out our official Dublin Arsenal Supporters of Club Bar, the River Bar, throughout the forthcoming season. All new members welcome. So sit back and enjoy the show. On tonight's show, our first of the 24-25 campaign. I hope everyone has had a good summer, quick summer, I have to say. And joined by my regular guests, a.k.a. Eamon Donnelly. Who are you this season? <laughs> uh, evening, Jonathan. Evening, John. New season there. Got to get to the pitch of it. Get to the pitch of it. <laughs> uh, no, we're all good. Um, we all saw each other on Friday night at the event. Um, so uh, it was great to see you all again. And uh, we're good to go. Thank you very much. I'm also joined by another one of the originals when we started back in 2021, which is mad. Uh, it's great to see it's still going. <laughs> um, John Melia, how are you, pal? Not too bad, Johnny. Not too bad. Glad the pre-season's over. Almost ready for the real thing now. <laughs> and I see you've grown, you've grown a lot of hair there, so you'll probably be all gone. I've had time on my hands, so I've just been lazy. The hell with it. It'd be all gone come the 17th of August. <laughs> and we start afresh. Um, just as Eamon said there a couple of moments ago, we all were at the Clayton Hotel and the Burlington Road for the um, Legends event. Ray Perler, Paul Merson and Liam Brady. Um, really well organised. Um, just a pity uh, the host, uh, Darrell O'Brien, couldn't be there. But uh, I thought the girl from Virgin Media... Uh, she, she was a, a last minute thing, but she done really well um, at presenting. But I thought before we came on air, as Eamon said, Ray Perder was on fire, wasn't he, Eamon? No, he was on fire. Like I mean, we didn't. He didn't need a host. He made, he made everybody else redundant. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, to, I have to say, he was actually. He's, he really is the life and soul, isn't he, Ray Perler? He just brings I mean, he's, a great, he's, a, he's a great way with the potter. He's a great way about yeah. him. And he's, he, yeah, and he he's an easy story. listen. And uh, he, he he speaks um, just as if he was having a conversation with you in the pub. And that's, you know, that's what people got very comfortable with very early on in the show, I thought. And I thought it went really well. Did you enjoy yourself as well, John? Yeah, I had a good night. Great catching up with everyone. As I just said, it's been a long pre-season. So catching up with everyone on Friday night was good crack. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd just like to mention Elevate Events as well. A really top show. Um, well done to them, and um, hopefully more in the future. Hopefully if they can get a few more Arsenal legends over. Of course, uh, meeting Robert Perez back in May as well for the Europa League event was quite nice. So four legends in a few months isn't bad. Um, I'm sure they're privileged to me to host this show. No comment. <laughs> They look starstruck in the photos, so that's said it all. <laughs> it's been, as we said, um, pre-season. Um, oh, it's really just with the Euros in the summer as well. It was really um, the players, many of the star players played for their countries um, and it was really a run out, I think, the US tour for the younger lads. Um, really impressed with that young lad, Scanlon. They scored the winner against Man United in the um two one victory. Um I don't want to start with the US tour briefly, lads. Um I'll come to you, John. I don't know if you saw any of it. Did you watch any of the US um tour? Not live. I watched a lot of the highlights, yeah. like a lot of people. Yeah. Um obviously um with the Euros and the South American Championships, a lot of the big names didn't come to the later. But I gave fringe players and all the young like young lads uh, a chance to shine, Leighton and Wherdy in particular. So yeah. uh that's a useful exercise that gives them, you know, tour experience with the first team squad. And I think you'll see them on the bench a hell of a lot. You might see, you might see them come on a lot more than you expect for a 17 year old. Yeah, good experience all around. Yeah, to young that Scanlon, um, I don't know if any's relation to our own Ed Scanlon, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. He, he took his goal really well against United. Um, and we drew a course against Bournemouth, uh, winning our penalties there. Um, 
with the US tour yourself, Amy, you're probably like us seeing the highlights on um, Arsenal.com. What did you make of the US tour yourself? Oh, I, I watched live, actually. I watched every game live. Right. Um, yeah, just because I'm very committed to the show. Um, <laughs> no, I, what happened was I actually um, I went in to buy a pass for the first game. I missed the Bournemouth game, but I went in to buy a pass for the, uh, the, the, the Man United game, and I ended up Looking, I said, "Well, you can buy four games for fourteen pound, or one one game for seven. So I, I I hit the fourteen pound button, thinking I wouldn't actually go through with all this, but I did. Um, I watched all the games. Um, look, the US tour is what it is. Um, it's good for uh, the revenue of the club. Um, whether people like it or whether they don't, we're American owned, and I think the owners uh, have, um." Fans have a different perspective on the owners than they have four years ago. Uh, and so the owners have been successful with uh, other uh, sports. And, you know, I think it's um, it was a good tour from that point of view. From the playing end, when I mean, you're looking at players who were only coming back, you know, the likes of Kai Havertz and stuff, only got off a plane and played. But, um, yeah, and Manieri and uh, Lewis Skelly, yeah, um, they were... They were, they, they were they put themselves in the front. I, I don't think it'd be the South Smith role uh, if and if uh, already hadn't been kind of there thereabouts. You know, I think we've seen we've been waiting for Nathan and Wardy for maybe a season or two. Yeah. You could be yeah. right. You could be right, but I, I think it was time. We are right. Maybe 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 you made it a little bit easier decision. Knowing that he was on the fringes. He get games, John, this year. He, I, think he, he'll, I think he'll get. I think he'll get more minutes yeah. than you think. Yeah, yeah, I do so mm. too. There's another player, I don't know whether he's agree as well. Carl Hine had a great few games in Carl Hine's a good goalkeeper, Jonathan. Um I, I, I referenced this um when everybody was talking about Raya Ramsdale. I said, Don't forget we have Carl Hine. Yeah. He's a very good goalkeeper. He's a, he looks a bit more assured with his feet um than uh, than he had done. Uh, and I think, you know, playing in the league every week, um if he manages to do that, uh, could be the making of that boy, you know. Well, hopefully, he gets the game time. Uh, Ballo yeah. de Ballo isn't it, in Spain? Um, That's what I said. They, 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 they've they, signed two keepers, yeah. yeah. They've signed two keepers, so hopefully, he'll get the game time he needs because he that's yeah. what he needs now. This is what he, he needs, yeah. Game time. absolutely. Yeah, I thought the I thought that young lad Skelly as well looks a talent. Mm-hmm. Along with Nam Weary, yeah, oh, he does. He does. He does. I mean, I mean, there's lots of guys who look like talents, but the this, the, these kids, I always say, um, it's not just about the talent. It's about how much do you really, really want it. And, and these two boys have put themselves ahead of everybody else in that regard. Yeah. You know, they, and they, they made a big jump this from my yeah. yeah, yeah, it's 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 exciting times as well. Um, you know, not only the incomings, which has been really, really positive over the last two or three summers, but the young kids coming in behind, there's plenty to look forward to in the future. And looking forward to hopefully Nam Weary getting a bit more game time. You know, with, with a busy schedule, I'm sure he'll get a look in at least in the League Cup games, if not even on the bench in Champions League as well. Um, over the last week, um, we, we were in the Emirates Cup. Uh, we retained it again, so it's nice to get our first trophy under our belt. Um, I tell from last Wednesday's game against uh, Zabi Alonso's Leverkusen, um, the 4 1 victory, you know, was really, I thought we were really at it that day. Um, two quick goals by um, Simchenko and Trossard within a minute. I thought the way Trossard took his goal was just, you know, it was exceptional. You know, he's got he's got guts and balls, but he he really he really gave our man Fring Pong. Down the wing, a tour of time in that game. Um, I thought Jesus has looked fresh, um, in pre season, and hopefully he doesn't get any, you know, niggles. I thought that tour goal to strike was just, you know, was, he just took it really well, a man with confidence. And t- then Havertz added a fourth. He was man of the match in that game and deserved his own. He's continued his form on from the end of last season and, and really the whole of last season. I thought, um. He was superb, as um, Matt said at the start of last season. Watch out for Kai Havertz; he'd be a star. Um, in terms of that game, um, Eamon, I'm not sure if you watched this. Um, what did you make of that game against Leverkusen? Of course, they were unbeaten. It's hard to read into it though, because with Leverkusen, of course, not up to speed. Yeah. 
you know, we're, 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 a, we're a week ahead of them in terms of where they need to be. And I know that doesn't sell much, but it is because with a, especially with a, um, an international tournament, you know, the, 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 the physicality of the game and the, 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 the sport science that goes into it is very exact. Yeah. So we were a week ahead of them and, that, and that's a lot. You know, it seemed like six weeks from the, from the US tour to the game against Leverkusen and in terms of how we looked, you know, yeah. so a lot can happen in a, in a week. But I think if you if you look at things in the round, forget about the, the games are the games. And John is right, looking forward to preseason being over and get the season on, you know. So if you look at things in the round, first of all, we got 89 points last year, right? So the, the question is, well, what do you do next, right? So when you, when you get 89 points and you have a young squad with talent, what you don't do is rip up the playbook, right? And all of this stuff that goes on is we need this, that, the other, that, that we don't. What we need is to try and identify the finest of margins. We were, remember, we were only a home win against Villa, Fulham or West Ham from winning the title, right? One of those wins would have won us the title, right? So we're talking about addressing fine margins and that's the level we're at, right? So looking at the games, both of the ones in the Emirates Cup, there's a few things that I noticed. One was, um, for a start, um, Bukayo Saka is a rival point in the box. It's definitely something they've worked on. He's yeah. changed when he arrives, how he arrives, and an option that they can go they can go to him in the air as well. They, they've obviously been... This, did, this didn't just happen by fluke that he got three-headed chances. Arsenal don't do, do things by fluke. Arteta doesn't work that way, right? That's something they've been working on. That's one thing I noticed. Um, I also noticed that um, Zinchenko, uh, to me, in pre-season, has looked like a guy... We know, he, we, we know he can't defend. We know that. Last year, my issue with Zinchenko, and I don't, I, I'm not on the Zinchenko's all of a sudden crap bandwagon, my issue with Zinchenko last year was he was taking too many touches on the ball and he was trying to force things. We know he's not a great defender. Would I play him against Mo Salah? No, I would not. Would I play him at home against Fulham when we're trying to open up a team? I absolutely would. But he looked like a fella who would really sharpen up. Jesus, um, probably as a reaction to his injuries, not only did he look sharp, he looked as if he bulked up. He really did. Yeah. You know? Martinelli... Looks sharp. <clears throat> For me, what was very telling was Ben White. Um, what, what, what do you say about him? But Ben White, what I saw in preseason, uh, uh, looked to me like a fellow was saying, you can have your Urian Timbers, you can have anybody else, and it's, uh, it's great Ben White's getting too many minutes and he needs a rest. Nobody's going to rotate with me. This is my spot. And that's a very, very healthy, healthy, competitive attitude. Now, Ben White will be rotated, I think, a bit more this year because he he, play, he played through injury. Um, but uh, certainly, uh, he 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 was a fellow who just decided, I want to be playing football and nobody's going to take my place. So I thought that Martinelli looked sharp as well. Um, okay, his end product wasn't great, but he seems to have... Um, he seems to have... Um, Kind of varied his game a small bit in terms of how he gets by a fullback, but he goes inside or outside. Uh, and I thought that was good. And when you talk about small margins, and I'll, I'll leave it here for now because I'm sure we're going to get into um, the squad uh, in a while. Um, small margins. Well, already the set piece coach has been working because those back, those back post corners weren't the feature last year. It was all near post flick on to, right? And all of a sudden, Declan Rice is swinging them in like boomerangs into the far post. So these these are twist like the Arsenal know that they reached a certain level last season. They were beaten by a very very fine margin, and it's small margins that need to be corrected. So whatever you can do, it reminds me. Um, I don't particularly like saying this, even though I'm far from anti English. Um, but uh, in in the two thousand and three uh, Rugby World Cup. And Clive Woodward was in charge of the uh, England rugby team. And they were only ever small margins away. And they got all those small margins right at that World Cup. And they won And they won it. And it, it, it strikes me that Arsenal are in that position. So um, 
let's not rip up the playbook. Uh, let's try and just get a bit more improvement than what we have. And that doesn't mean let's not get, add new players, but it means like we're we're a possession based team. We're going to stay a possession based team. We're not going to become lumpered up to some stick up front. But it's just not going to happen, you know. So um, now I was pleased with the preseason. Um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, what happens next. You know? Yeah, I thought it was it was a really good three or four days. You know, it was strange the way they done the Emirates Cup this year. You know, splitting it all over four days, but it's, that, that's just the way sometimes the fixture list and the teams coming over have to do. But um, I was looking at some of the papers yesterday when we won uh, two 0 against Leon. Um, they're saying it's our cheat code, the two corner kicks, but having the most assists from corners last season, you know, the jealousy is great from the media, but it's it's a great arsenal to have in our armory, cue the pun, John. Um, I thought Saliba and Gabriel had very similar goals, but over those um, four days of the Emirates Cup, John, were you really impressed on the performance from the lads? As Eamon said, I wouldn't get too carried away with the, the performance yeah. against Leverkusen, but obviously much further down the, the pre-season route than there. Um, what I enjoyed was the attitude of the players. because It was really high press. He played at a high tempo, yeah. and that was impressive. Um, the Leon game, first, I, I saw the whole game after, after the fact. In the first half hour, we pressed the absolute crap out of them. They couldn't get out of their own half. Yeah. As for scoring goals from set pieces, we were really good at our last season. That's something you want to contain. If that uh, retain I should say if not even improve on it because when you've got defenders and headers of a ball like Saliba like Gabriel like Havertz we've got a lot of height in this side now for a long long time we had a really like small it, yeah. a small technical side really good technical side but no height we have a lot of height in the side and if you have someone like uh, Royce who can deliver a ball that, that way that's a weapon yeah. that's a weapon all day long so that's something now the opposition know we have that they seen it all last season, but if it's as good as it's as it was against Leon, as good as it was last year, that's going to be hard to defend against. So, so as Eamon said, keep doing what we did really well last season, and then try to find a few tweaks which might give us, as you said, a small margin. It was noticeable Saka attacking the far post. Yeah, if that gets us the next three or four goals next season. That that could be a huge difference. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, impre- I'm more impressed with the attitude of the players. They, they took a series. Um, they all know that they're, they're playing for places because the squad is big. The, the squad is big. So um, that was more, that was the most impressive thing for me because, you know, a week or two before the start of the season, they were that hungry. And uh, that, that, that was really impressive. So fair play to them. Yeah, I saw actually uh, one of our former players playing for Leon yesterday, Ainsley Maitland-Niles. I say he was looking at the way we performed yesterday. Do you think, between ourselves, do you think Ainsley Maitland Nines would ever even get into that Arsenal team now, or was it was it the right decision at the time to let him go? Do you think no. he'd ever get near that team? Probably should have said we probably should have let him go a season or two beforehand. Yeah, um, he had his opportunity to be Arsenal's right back. He didn't want to be a right back. John. He, he shot himself in the foot. So it, it, good luck to him. Look, I have no, nothing. John, to... back in the days, back in the days, um, yeah. there was one conversation you and I had. Back in the days when we were in, uh, the, before we moved into the River Bar, um, you and I both agreed that this fella had all of the attributes to become another Lauren. Yeah. And Lauren was a midfielder converted to fullback. Angel, he had that in front of him. He got his Z game and hadn't he? You After know, he... Al- after Hector Bellerin done his cruise, he was never the same again. Ainsley yeah. had it in front of him, and I think he had a bit of a big head at the time um, and didn't see himself being relegated out to the fullback. But he could have he could have nailed it on that spot for a long, long time because he had all the physical attributes. But um he's uh, he's a lad, I think he's copped on. Um and uh he's a he's a decent lad and I wish him well, and it was nice to see that he got he got a warm reception, not only from uh, the Arsenal fans, but from 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 the Arsenal players as well. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to give it to. I was reading a piece actually in one of the papers uh, last week. Ray Perler was doing a piece, I think it was in the Sun last Sunday, and he's saying Arteta has balls. You know, if these you know these young players coming through the academy, like you know the likes of 
Uh, Joe Willick, Balligan, and as we saw in the summer there, um, Smith Rowe going to Fulham. We're getting good fees for them, you know. But if you're if you're not good enough, if you're not up to the standard of uh, the likes of uh, Bukaya Saka, you're not going to make that starting eleven or even the, the bench. Do you, do you agree, um, aiming with Arteta, that uh, if, no, if these think, players aren't good enough, move them on? But the whole idea of an academy is not just to supply players. Like, if anybody who thinks that the academy is so as we get three or four players in, you know, every couple of seasons, that's not what it is. It's to try and pick the, pick the best players, scout them, cultivate them, knowing that 95% of them are not going to make it uh, at Arsenal, knowing that 75% of them are not going to make it in the pro game at all, right? Yeah. But under the financial fair play rules, um, it goes down on the balance sheet, it's their profit. So the whole raison d'etre, if you like, uh, it's not like Ali, Ali, oh my, right? Um, <laughs> the whole reason of, a, of an academy has changed, you know, in that it's it's now a balance sheet thing. So I think the Arsenal Academy is in good shape. And it's, it's something I was going to talk about later on. There was a bit of a meltdown, Jesus, but when does the meltdown ever stop? What about... Um, Cheeto Obi Martin going to Man United, yeah. you know. Um, he had to go. He was looking for astronomical money as a 16-year-old, yeah. right? And people said, oh, he went for football reasons. He didn't his arse. He went for money. He went because his agents. Uh, and yeah. United, United, who are a basket case, right? They're willing to pay him that. Now, you'll hear the chorus of, but he scored nine goals in one game um, or whatever it was. You know, we should have brought the bank to keep him. Okay, you break the bank to keep him. And then legally, when he's 18, he's, he can renegotiate because you can only sign him till he's 18. Yeah. And then he's going to hold you to ransom. And we're breaking the bank to keep a kid who could be uh, either Thierry Henry or Nicholas Bentner. We don't know. Yeah. You know, because like when a kid is that good, Nicholas Bentner was actually brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. 10 years of age. Brilliant. His attitude wasn't right, you know. Um, so I'm just saying to you, um, the Highland Academy, I think, is doing well. Um, but let's not have a meltdown because some 16-year-old decided to head off for money. We'd no option other than to let him go because if yeah. that's going to be his attitude now, what's it going to be like when he's 20, 21? And we'd have to renegotiate uh, when he's 18 anyway, you know? Yeah, yeah there's no room for players with egos. We saw that with... The likes of Aubameyang and Co. You know, if if your age and things, I think the players sadly, you know, they get into their head. And, well, look, look, the age is job to do the best of the player. Look, he's sixteen. You yeah. don't know where his family coming from, but he's been get he's getting totally grand away from Man United. How can he turn that down? Exactly. As Eamon said, he could turn out to be a le- a non league player, but that contract he has, you know, it's going to set him up for life if the agent and the family do the right thing, and I think they will. So it's a no brainer for him. But look, he's getting the money. Fine. But well, Eamon's absolutely right. We can't be held to ransom by 16. The catch, John, as I mentioned, is when he's 18, United yeah. have to renegotiate that. Yeah. yeah. And, and and if you do it for one 16-year-old, you're going to end up doing it for the mall. So you've got to draw the line. You yeah. have to. I'm sorry. Now, look, good luck to the kid. He has his money. If he makes it, good luck. Well, how many 16-year-olds make? Yeah. We've seen so many come to the ranks at Arsenal who are brilliant at that age. J. Emmanuel Thomas brings to mind. Absolutely outstanding, 17, 18 years of age. He's had a... Two yeah. Yeah, he's had a football yeah. league career. Yeah. He hasn't had a Premier League career. You know, so you just don't know. So, I mean, yeah. so I'm not going to... You know, you can't blame the kids. Yeah. Look for, I don't blame Arsenal saying... Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, to be honest with you, John, I, 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 I think I have a bit more faith in the likes of Eden and Weary and this young lad, Lewis Kelly, you know, progress with Arsenal. You know, I can. I, I don't think they'll be moved on. You know, especially more so than where he. You know, he looks. He looks an Arsenal type player, doesn't he? You know, he he loves the club. I think, and you know, hopefully. The thing is more than Eddie when Perry made us act. Yeah. The decision. You know, yeah. that's where the fate has to be. And Jack Wilshire. Yeah. You mean yeah? That's where your fate has to be. Because they're the ones that have to make decisions. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. you know, that's where the fate is. Yeah. And you can only wish, I suppose. Um, Obi Martin the best, but um, no, yeah, I don't actually wish him the best. <laughs> at sixteen, moved <laughs> to United. Uh, I, I, I just think he made. 
because a lot of people come to Man United. I, I, I don't wish him. I don't wish him evil. Do you think he, even, I just don't do you wish think, him the best. Do you think he should have stayed? For that kind of money, why, why would he stay for that kind of money? He's, as I said earlier, he's six million. I think yeah. I think oh. at sixteen. I think at sixteen years of age, um, money shouldn't be the dominant factor in what you do next. Yeah. Because I it's do. all it's all it's all in front of him. That's, that's, that's it. You know, it's it's really changing money for him and his family. So that's that's my my opinion. And he doesn't know what he's going to be like when he hits eighteen. Then, as I said, he could end up being. You know, walking in Tesco's for Troy's sake, like I did. Every little help, Sean. <laughs> it's not exactly a vote of confidence by his handlers if they're in for the quick book now. You know, um, yeah. Yeah. I think the smart move from him, from a career point of view, a bit like a kid going to college, right? Might have been just hang on for another couple of years and see where your development is. You know, um, but look, yeah. this is the one. Get over it. Yeah. But I mean, but this is some, some, of, some of the comments by Arsenal fans about right, here, yeah. we, here we go again. Could we not just pay the money? Uh, it really is now. It's getting like it's getting, when it's you see hard, like, you know? when you see what the project has brought the last three or four seasons. If anything, we're going in the upward trajectory. You know, it's it's only really a matter of time, if not this season. You know the the title is it is coming. You know, like I've never been to be honest. I suppose like your says, it's it's the optimism that kills you, as John says. But I I think all Arsenal fans, we do feel it, don't we? That it it is coming. Yeah, I just wanted to cover that as well because I had one of I had that in my side notes about things I wanted to kind of speak about. You know, pre season, like I'm worried about uh, Arsenal fans' sense of entitlement, and I'm worried about them becoming uh, like Liverpool fans, you know? Um, I mean, Liverpool were chasing City for a few years and they actually became tribally unbearable, you know? Uh, and it's almost as if uh, we have to win it this year. It's this, this is ours to win it. Like, we have a great chance of winning the title this year. We, if we get it right, we've 89 points to build on. I personally don't think it's gonna require 89 points this year. Because uh, I don't think Man City will be as good. Yeah. But Man City, if Man City go and get hundred points, we won't be winning any title. Yeah. Does that does that mean we should have a meltdown? No, it does not. But I don't think Man City are going to get out and get hundred points. All right. But I just think that starting off the season with this kind of anticipation that it's that we're a shoe in and it's a given. Wait, let that is something. If we're kind of four points off the pace after the four six games, we're in a good position. Four six games we have are savage. Right, yeah. but I, I, I guarantee you any money if we're three or four points off the pace, Arsenal fans will be having a meltdown and we'll be back into this kind of you know, uh, Arteta's taking this team as far as he can. And really, we don't need that kind of noise, we don't, you know. I'm very, very clear on what both Edu and Arteta, and in fairness, the owners have done, they've put us in a position where our trajectory is rising and we're in a position now where. The age profile of the squad, right? We're ready to be really, really high end competitive. We've been high end competitive, not only in the in the Premier League, in Europe as well. You know, um, but yeah, yeah. It takes look. It takes look. Liverpool. I mean, okay, we might have all had a secret chuckle about this, but Jesus, the the, the level Liverpool reached pursuing Man City was phenomenal. What yeah. they did. What they did, they did what we 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 done the last two seasons. They done for far away. Yeah, and that man is not Man City team. I know more because they won four in a row. They won, I think, six of the last seven. Liverpool managed to get ahead of them once, and they and that included one season with one defeat, ninety eight points or something ridiculous, and they still don't yeah. win this. Yeah, that'll tell you what the standard Man City is. There. So I forgot about that. Give you your jocks. The Arsenal challenge for the title again. That's like, that's an if. John, I'd for, John, sorry for interrupting. You. I, yeah. I'd forgotten about the ninety-eight points. Now, yeah. can you imagine? Like, I didn't hear when Liverpool got ninety-eight points, people shout and clap out. No, they didn't win the league, though. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> well, I'm, I'm just trying to make a point that this is this is the standard. Yeah. That not just themselves, but the rest of the. You're dead right. It ain't going to be. It ain't going to be. 
I will give and Liverpool fans one. Right. You know, people need to calm down and 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 just support the team for the season. I do, agree, I do agree with Eamon. Um, yeah. Liverpool fans, they were very calm with Jurgen Klopp. You know, they won it once in the, what the three or four years. But the one thing the Liverpool fans did do, they stuck by him. You know, because he knew that there was a plan there. And, you know, th- th- that was just an incredible, you know, front three they had as well. For me, you know, man, I am. Um, but it gives, sadly, it, gives you know, me, it gives me no pleasure to say this. They were terrific. <laughs> yeah. I don't like saying that, but they were terrific, you know? Yeah. They blitz teams, didn't they? Like, we were on the end of, sadly, a few hidings from them, but probably deservedly so. I probably held, you know, Liverpool were the best team. And, and probably, to, to be honest, Man City won the league two or three times when they did, didn't really deserve it. You, you can see what the team is. But what, what did Liverpool fans do? They support the team, they support the manager. That's exactly what we have to do. Exactly. That's exactly what we have to do. Just support the team. I think, I think the keywords are the aim. I think the keywords you mentioned... Arsenal fans' entitlement, as Eamon said, you know, we've got this entitlement that we should be winning it. You know, you know, it's, when you're facing a top team like Man City, you have to fight for it, don't you? You know, like nothing's, nothing's a given. Well, we're no more entitled to win it than the other top yeah. teams. But, but I tell you what we're entitled to expect. We're entitled to expect that the club will do everything in its power to be as competitive as we can be. And we yeah. put ourselves in that position. And we're in a great position, um, but you got to get the breaks as well. You know, as I said to you, we were one, we were one, um, we were one of, of, of three home games: Fulham, Villa, West Ham away from winning the title. Right? What I'd like to see, if there was any learnings, if if I, if I was an outsider looking at small margins, because it's very hard. To get the small margin when you get 89 points and you win 16 and draw one of your last 18 games, that's phenomenal. But if it, the, one, the one small margin that I would see as just as a kind of a um, an observer, uh, well, obviously partisan observer, but the, the football observer would be the day we, the day we played Villa at home, um, Liverpool looked as if they um, they were going to give the title a real rattle and lost that morning, right? And we went to Villa, and Villa, Villa gave us the ball for 45 minutes. And we had it all our own way. We should have been three or four up. We weren't. In the second half, um, Villa decided, we've rolled our luck. We're going to st- all step up five or ten metres now, and we're going to make the game a bit different. And we couldn't respond to that. So one of the small margins, I would think, is that there are a lot of games where we're going to play opposition that's going to sit deep and, 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 and give us the pitch, right? Can I add to that, Eamon? Can I add to that? Yeah. I also don't think it helped that the Villa game was sandwiched between two big games against Bayern Munich. Uh, no. I oh, think oh, oh, your heads were distracted. I think your heads were distracted by that as well. I think I it was think, a combination of both. I, I think, think it worked on. I think, no. it, I think we probably wanted to win that game in jig time. But, but, but what, I'm, what I'm saying is that one of the, the learnings that I'd like the team to get from that is that, okay, if, if a team gives us the pitch and we haven't put them away and if they step up, we've got to respond to that. We've got to be able to respond to that by doing something different, by maybe maybe moving your wingers in a different angle, by, cha- by, changing, by changing the landscape of the pitch. If they yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd also say they need to not worry about the, the next game, concentrate the game. Because I, exactly, yeah. I do think they got distracted. But that's, as you said, that's a learning curve. Yeah. This is, you know, this is a learning curve. We were really good last season. Ah, oh, so, so good last season. One slip up. This is a new season. And that's what has everyone excited. Because the last two seasons, we've been so good. And that has everyone excited. And we're all looking forward to the game on Saturday. And let's get, let, let's get this show on the road. Yeah, there's there's definitely an excitement building season on season now. You're, we're adding quality as well, year on year. Yeah. Um, which wraps up her um, pre-season and winning, yeah, you know, it's probably winning the Emirates Cup. It, it means nothing really, but you know, just for the psychological. Well, it, means, it means nothing really, Jonathan. But as Al Mister Brennan would have said, <laughs> it's the day's bread. And I'm sure there's a few ham and cheese toasties done, and all Mister Brennan's bread. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, no, I have to say, one player that really impressed me again um, was Trossard. He's just gone on and, you know, he's just, what a performance against Leverkusen, you know, like. I, see, I love him. Yeah. I love watching I think, him. I think he's kind of, I don't know whether you agree the two years, he's kind of like, kind of like an unsung hero, wasn't he? Like, there's such so many good players in that certain eleven, but he does, yeah. he creates things that you don't, you wouldn't think, you know, he's just. He looks like he, he looks like one of these guys that you'd see on in American. Um, they didn't know the boy next door would murder ten people, you know. Uh, <laughs> but he, he has that kind of head in him, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm glad he found football. That's all I can say, right? But um, but he, do you know what? His and I'm not comparing anybody to the greatest of all, Dennis. Um, but he has that slide across the grass ice skating movement um that dennis had and um, he's very very fleet footed you know yeah, fleet -footed. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a lovely player to watch he really is you know yeah. that goal he scored actually against him because it was it was kind of you'd expect that from Berkham, wouldn't you it was just so cheeky but you know the way he took it was yeah a lot of composure a lot of composure, yeah, that and, composure. and he knew where the players were around them so i mean yeah it was, that's it was a nice finish nice goal and he, he finished last season outstanding. I mean, there you go. You find a player in the second half of the season who's got all them goals. That's one of the fine margins. I mean, if he's not there, we don't get close to the season last season. Yeah. You know, so well, you're hoping he can continue doing that. Yeah, well, yeah, what a January signing he was. Yeah, and he, he's only gone on strand to strand. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really excited now, you know. Yeah, the, the excitement is really building for him. Um, this Saturday, uh, our over against Wolves at home, and um, brings us to the transfers. Um, not much really incomings. Um, uh, only that David Raya was um, signed on a permanent deal, which is huge for um, Arsenal fans. He had a great um, four season last year, Golden Glove winner, and I'm sure he'd be up there again this season. A, a fairly calming presence, I think. You know, at the back, you know, you can see that with the defenders. Um, and Ramsdale, you'd find it tough to um sneak back in. Um, the other ma major signing though, it was in July. Uh, Ricardo Calafiori uh, signed from Bologna for uh, thirty two and a half million. Can play at left back and centre back, but can move nicely with the ball like Saliba and Gabriel, as we saw when he played for Italy in the Euros. Are you impressed, Eamon, with the signing of Califiori? Will he add that quality? Anybody who grew up in the 1980s, as we did, uh, John, um, would remember the Fiat Mirafiori. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was a kind of a luxury. That was a kind of a luxury model. So I hope I hope that's a good omen. Um, <laughs> by the way, I hope the supporters um, are more. There's a, there's great opportunities for a chant with his surname. Um, this. I heard yesterday, oh, Califiori, I'm thinking, that's <laughs> so hot. I mean, yeah. we could do like, Califiori dreaming, we could really get <laughs> yeah. lonely, you know. There's I like of, him. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's lots of things we can do. I tell you, this boy is a defender. Um, I'm not comparing him to the great Paolo Maldini, but the first thing he loves to do is defend, right? But he also happens to be really, really uh, aggressive on the ball. I want to say aggressive on the ball. He wants to drive forward. So he's he, he's a mix of a number of things. Um, I think he spent most of his time uh, on the left side. See, we don't really have a left fullback in this team. We have left-sided defenders. I think he'd be a great addition. I was delighted when they got the business done. Uh, I thought he was terrific in the in the Euros, in, 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 and I'm an Italian supporter. Um, reason being, when Ireland were never at tournaments, they were the team I picked as a boy. Um, and I had a mate in school, uh, Pedro McCarty, whose mother and father on the chipper. It was a great <laughs> label. It was a great label to be a friend of somebody who owned the chipper back in Fingers in the, in the 70s. But um, no, I was, uh, I was delighted he signed. Um, I like Italian defending. Um, uh, Chiellini to me, it's, it's just yeah. you know. I wish he, I wish he signed uh, for Arsenal instead of Mustafi. You know, yeah. uh, at, yeah, at that exactly. time when he was kind of thinking about um, maybe. Um, so look, I'm delighted to sign. He's quick as well. You know, he's good, good across the grass, and I think it'd be a good addition. Uh, I think there'll be one or two more additions too. Um, yeah. Yeah. How, how impressed were you, John? I know. 
I, I was actually really impressed with him. I, I knew nothing, very little about him, to be honest. But when I saw he was in the build up to the goal against Croatia when Italy got that last minute one. How impressed are you? Are you excited well, about? Well, uh, before I knew we weren't interested in him, like game and I watched the Euros, and he stood out in a very, very poor underperforming Italian side. He did stand out. Um, so when I heard we were linked to him, I was excited. As Eamon said, he's a proper defender, but he, he does know how to use the ball. Um, I'm, I, I'm stunned by the quality we have at the back. I really am. We've got strength and depth all over the place. So um, I'm, I'm delighted we have him. And like Eamon, I think there's going to be more signings. I really do. I think there's going to be... There's a, obviously, we've been linked with Spanish midfielder at Mourinho. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's one or two there that we don't know about. I do expect more additions before the end of the month. Yeah, because I, I do, I do and Arteta, they have this knack of pulling a player out of the bag they've never heard or been linked with. And suddenly, I know Meek and Marino, you just mentioned him there, John. He he briefly played for Newcastle United, didn't he, a couple of seasons back? Six seasons back. Six seasons, that's how far. Do you, do you think this is, he was fairly decent, I have to say now, in the Euros. Do you think he'd fit in to the Arsenal style? Yeah, that's quality. Yeah, whatever they feel, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Where, would you, where, where would you see him positionally, John? Yeah. Um, well, I see him in the midfield. We, I mean, do we have a proper number six? Probably not. I think parties, party can do a job for us, but it's not the job he was doing two or three years ago. Yeah, Jorginho can do a job for us, but it's, I mean, he doesn't. He never had pace, but he can still do a job for us. Maybe Mourinho could do that job as well. Switching between Royce. Nice. He's more a, a left number eight, but I can see him filling in at number six as well. It's about strength and depth, and it's not just strength and depth, it's quality and depth. Well, yeah. So, you know, so he adds to that. So I'd be more than happy to see him at the next it, It's funny you should say that, John, because I was thinking about this earlier on. Yeah. Any signings that we get, right, are not going to be to break the ceiling. Oh. They're going to be to raise the floor. Yeah. So, yeah. If you're talking about a 22 man team, right? Yeah. What's coming in needs to be as good, yeah, absolutely, yeah. as what's there. And yeah. like, that's a classic case. Like, I thought Thomas was finished when I saw him in the US tour. Um, you know, he looked, he looked like a, a heavyweight boxer, uh, on his last legs, but I was very impressed with him yesterday, you know. Yeah. Um, he, and I'm just saying, and something you've always said, um. Jesus, if only you could keep him fit, you know. He's a terrific player, Thomas, you know. Yeah. Um, but I don't I don't I don't trust his body. No, no, no. I think if you get Marino in, which I, I as I understand it, it's gonna happen, right? And if you get him in, uh we have that position between Parity, Jorginho, and and him covered, right? And it gives us options to do different things with Declan and yeah. Kai and all that type of stuff. Uh, I don't think we'll get a um, centre forward. Um, I'm not sure we need, need one. When you get 90 goals, um, and this is what I meant by not ripping up the playbook, why would you bring in some lump who you're looking for 30 goals from? Like, you look at the likes of, say, Giacares, for example. You know, scored 43 goals in the Portuguese league. Um, so what? You know, and I'm not being disrespectful, but so what? Yeah, um, I, I pointed that as well, Eamon. He was playing for Coventry three years ago. There's a reason for that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was love a very good thing. Coventry, the specials, we love you and all that. But, you know, <laughs> um, no, but seriously, like, so, and and then a, a friend of mine whose, whose judgment is very, very good, uh, an Arsenal friend of mine, said we should go, go all out for Ollie Watkins. I don't think so. I don't think so. First of all, John, you and I had this conversation you don't yeah. trust his hamstrings. That's the worst thing, right? I, I love him with the car. I don't trust his hamstrings. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Ollie's 28 now, and I know he's a gunner and all that, but that, that means jack shit, right? Um, let's not deal with sentiment. I think at 28, I think he's probably peaked, and I think he's probably peaked in a team that suits him because they play counter attack and football. And I think that's his game. We're a possession based team. I think Ollie would look ordinary in our team. A fair point, yeah. It's a fair point. Well, uh, except for in the games where the very, very few games where we look to play on the counter, we don't approach many games like that. But you're not going to shell out 80 million for a guy who you're going to use when you're playing the counter, you know. Yeah. So I think 
we're going to add another attacker, but I think it'll be more uh, somebody who might be able to double up to take the load off Saka, you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it could be it could be some Turkish bloke for thirty million quid or whatever, you know. Yeah. How yeah. disappointed were you, um, lads? I don't know how strong the links were because uh, I was, you know, as usual, we, we, we as fans we go on, you know, paper talk and Sky Sports News love to ramp it up. But do you think we were close, or were we even ever interested in Julian Alvarez that went to Atletico Madrid? Do, oh. do, do you believe that, John? No. I, I, I think he might be someone that Atletico would have loved, but we weren't ever gonna. They, they, Man City were never gonna do business with us for better like Alvarez. Never, exactly. Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> yeah. Not a chance of yeah, you can sell them to anybody. You, do you know what? Yeah. You, you can you can sell them to the French Foreign Legion, but you're not selling them to the Arsenal. That's uh, all, yeah, absolutely. That, that was never going to happen. Yeah, to, as, as excited as Arsenal fans got, there is one thing though. I, I can't see Ali Watkins going because I think he's settled there now with Villa. You know, I, I think, think he's peaked. You know, I think Emery's right. made him a good player even more. But I think he's, he'd have a very a good player. By the way, I think he'd have a very good attitude at. Arsenal, he's very, he seems pretty grounded, doesn't he? You know, Ollie Watkins is a terrific player, but the point yeah. I'm trying to make is he's I think he's at his peak now, but I think his football is better suited to a counter attacking team. You know, he's a terrific footballer with a great attitude. You know, is there any strikers out there, lads, that you'd say, yeah, that's that's that that's a type of Arsenal type. Attacker, or well, well Jonathan, you know, can I ask you what's the story on Vladovich these days? <laughs> that was all speculation. Name, I've been holding up for three years now. <laughs> I've been holding yeah, up so. <laughs> we can see what you... <laughs> you see. The world is not a wash with these. I mean, well, what, you know, in, in, in terms of Aussie men, um, where's he gonna go? I mean, I assume PSG are eventually gonna cave and take him because. With the demands, the attitude, he's a bit of a kind of a bit of a Neymar kind of heading them now here, you know. Yeah. I'm super sorry, you know. That's not what we need coming in. No. It really isn't, you know. 100 no. No, I think he's too much of a personality. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think I think he'd be the type of player where he just if it's not working for him, he, you know, he'd you know, he does down tools. Um, John, would you like to see anyone? Yeah, like I have to be honest, as I said, the, the, the strike up pool. Is 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 very limited out there. There's no one that immediately springs to mind. I think you're right. I think I'm enjoying to be a, a, an attacking wide player. Um, but uh, the strikers. I mean, look at Mbappe. You're not getting him. Vinicius Junior. You're not getting. Him. There's not a huge. I mean, Morata was captain of Spain. I wouldn't have him at Arsenal. There's not a huge pool of straight great strikers out there. There really isn't. Yeah. Um. I mean, everyone's talking about Tony, but again, he brings a lot of baggage. He's the wrong side. He's, he's age for the kind of price that Brentford are going to be looking for. I mean, why has no one signed him? You know, you just look at Spurs have just spent over 60 million on Dominic Sonic. Yeah, that's... I mean, he had a great year last year, 60 plus million. And he's a good one. You know, it just... Yeah, he's, yeah. Sorry, you know, so it, it, it's it's really tough to go out there and buy a striker to improve this Arsenal So It really is. So when you've got, fingers crossed, a fit Jesus, and we all know how good he is when he's fit. We all saw Corey Havertz last season, outstanding in the second half of last season, and we've just been singing the praises of Trotter. And I, we all think Martinelli could one day be that centre forward. There's options there. I think we do need, I'd like to see cover for Saka. That's the big one, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It could be, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's where I think it'd be a wide player rather than a centre forward. Yeah, it's kind of disappointed. You know, a wide player kind of like Pedro Neto would have been nice. You know, he to delivery he has. But, as well, I mean, Lone, I would have paid sixty-five million. Player, but yeah. how reliable? How reliable is he? I mean, this is the problem we had with Sterling. Yeah, yeah. We all know the quality he has. But how reliable has he been? How available has he been for the last two or three seasons? Yeah, this is what you have to remember. You know, it's it's all right saying he's a great player when he's fit. You're, you're spending, 54, yeah. you're spending 54 million pounds on a player who, when he's fit, is outstanding. Declan's always available. Kai Havertz is always available. But, you know, you, you know, you, you need to be available. I mean, just, yeah. we have 25 games between Saturday and New Year's Eve. 45 <laughs> games. 
<laughs> Hinkerberry. That's a season in itself. <laughs> how much drink is that, John? Legal. <laughs> it's insane. How many John. games? Talents are leaders, Eamon. <laughs> how much drink is that? That's a hell of a lot of drink, Eamon. That's 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 twenty boy Paddy's day before we even get to the end of the year. So <laughs> Yeah, it's a crazy this is what I'm on about. You need players who are going to be available and reliable. And by the way, those 24 games don't include the internationals. These players are going to go on as well. Yeah, it's yeah. an insane amount of games. In fact, the Champions League group stage doesn't finish to the end of January. Yes. Yeah. No. So this is this. There's going to be rotation because there has to be rotation. There's no way anyone in this team or anyone else's team is playing 60 plus games a season. Absolutely. Two, and on top of that, internationals. It's just insane. You, so we better get used to it. So this is where we need options. We definitely need options and we need fit players and we need players who can sit on the bench 28, 28 weeks of the season or else be starting 28 weeks of the season. You need them available so we can manage the time, manage the time of the legs. We don't need players who are, oh shit, yeah, he'll be ready in March. We've had a lot of that. So we're, that's, this is why we're managing Timber. Can't, pull, can't rush him back. Yes. Got to keep him. Got, got to keep an eye on him. So this is, you know, he'll play. He'll play his part this season, but don't expect him to play fifty games this season. No. Yeah, exactly. Now no. coming back after such a, a major um, injury like that, yeah, yeah. He's, he's hungry. He's fit. Yeah, his time will come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arteta's quite good. He's quite good at managing players. Yeah, yeah. Let me see who. Um, Edu and Arteta can pull out the bag before the transfer deadline today. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more activity, outgoings and incomings, hopefully. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, th- I think there will be, but I would say I'm not a gambling guy. Um, I do an accumulator on a Saturday, which is just a novelty pot shot. Um, but I, I, I'd say Marino will come for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I want to make, make the pronunciation clear. Marino. Not Mourinho, who I would never let darken the door of our club. Um, <laughs> I, I think we may pull a bit of a fire in the lucky bag. Twenty-five so, or thirty million, yeah. somebody who can play wide, who's reliable. I think you know. Yeah, I don't want to go through some of the outgoings, lads. Uh, as I mentioned. We said goodbye to Smith Rowe for twenty seven million to Fulham, which decent bit of business and maybe um more uh, as he progresses his career there. Um we said goodbye at the start of the summer at out of the club, uh, Cedric Suarez and um Mohammed and Eni um moved on, sadly. Um just no longer part of the <laughs> the bit part players really they became near the end, but um good pros in their own right. Um uh, Nuno Tavares and Sambi Laconga. Um, went to Lazio and Sevilla on loan, um, and a few, a couple of the young lads here I just mentioned, um, Rule Walters, who, who looked like a bit of a prospect, and um, a Mario Cozier Dubry. Um, also there was a bit, bit of an upcry from Arsenal fans about them to leave, and but as we said earlier on the show about the younger players, realistically, where they'd only get into the first team with the way this team's going, probably not. Um, is there any deal going there, lads? Briefly. Um, sorry from Smith Rowe, we're glad to see some of them moved on, yeah. Um, we have to move players on. As Eamon said, yeah, we have to get money in. We have to come better at selling players. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 27 million seems fair for Smith Rowe. In time, Fulham might look at it as a bargain. And my Smith Rowe say, because he is popular with all Arsenal fans, I hope, I hope it does that way, except for the two games against us this season. And um, Eddie... That move with with Marseille could happen alone with a thirty million obligation. That's good money for for Eddie. That really is. So we need to get back to selling. So you have to draw the line in Los Angeles. You can't keep having these players taking up squad spaces. I mean, Reese Nelson. I can't believe he's still there. I I believe from what I've heard, he's had opportunities to talk to other clubs, and he's not interested. So you could say that's brilliant loyalty. He needs a career. He's not going to make it at Earth. You know, so he got a couple of hundred minutes last season, I think. He needs more at these age. He needs a career. He needs to be pointing to get into a, a first team somewhere else. You know, so you, you've got to give, you got to be fair to these players as well. Go out there and make a career for yourself. So, you, well, you know. Just an answer to the, the question, uh, Jonathan. 
some fan, uh, fans were up in arms about Kozia Dewberry and all this type of thing. They're the same fans who want Aussie men. And, you know, yeah. so, you know, I just think that we just have a fan base. And it, it seems that the um, the keyboard warriors among our fan base are louder than any other club I've ever seen, right? But John is right. Like, I mentioned earlier on, what is the purpose of the academy? It's to provide you with players, but also to provide you with an infrastructure for your balance sheet. You develop players and you decide, do you know what? If we were where we were four years ago, those lads wouldn't have been milked on. Yeah. But we're not where we were four years ago. We're here now because we put the foundations in place. Right? So for the good of those guys, they've got to move on. Reese. Uh, West Ham are really keen on Reese. Um, I yeah. don't, um, I wonder, are his wages an obstacle? Maybe, um, I mean, this is where you, you know, it, what's more important to you? Do you want to play? Do you want to have a career, or do you want to just sit back and get the paycheck? You said this about the young lad that went to United. He's, yeah. not, he, I mean, at, at his age, he should be looking to play. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really sad to see Smith Rowe go, but I'm not critical of the club. No. No. So we all have to go. Um, I, I, I've said on this show a few times, I am I have doubts about that guy's mental strength. Yeah. That's the best way I'll put it, right? Um, but he's a terrific footballer. And I'll tell you what, his legacy at Arsenal will be, he came on when we were near relegation, right? Yeah. And him and Saka ignited the club. And he was part of that journey, a big, big part of that journey. Uh, he's a beautiful player to watch. Um, I don't think it's necessarily fitness with him. I just, I, I always suspected there was an undercurrent that just wasn't right for, for the lad, you know? Well, there's no doubt that Arteta did trust him. And as I said earlier about the quality of the depth, Arteta needs to look around, look at his bench and know he can trust everybody on that bench. Yeah. I don't think he could do that last season. That's, yeah. that's when he loved this season. Guardiola trusts everybody on his bench. Yeah. Because that, that that's where they got to yeah. Yeah. over time, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah I, I think, you know, being honest, I think Fulham could be a good fit for him, you know? Um, I hope he does well. I love the guy, you know? I think he, he stood out now from the couple of games I've seen. Um, the results of, of Fulham in pre season. He scored in the last couple of games here. So, you know, he's got Brian Leno there. Another former corner and William, who were there at the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know so I think he's in a club where he knows ex players, you know, and they might make him feel, you know, Fulham seems to be a good family kind of club as well. So I hope, you know, I hope he can make some sort of, like, he is a talent and hopefully, you know, he gets back in the England team and, you know, gets his head right. And, you know, maybe, like, sometimes moves can be good for you as well, you know, new lease of life. You know, and he's he's still it's still in London as well, so he didn't have to move a million miles away neither. Um, we're going to move on to our fixtures, the four six fixtures that Todd had mentioned. Um, as Amy mentioned, a few crackers in there. Um, Wolves at home, of course, is our opening game, three o'clock. Um, first time in a long time we've kicked off at three o'clock for our opening game. Um, that's on Premier Sports for all the viewers. Um, Aston Villa is away, five thirty kickoff. Um, there's another tough one. Uh, Brighton at home wraps up August, and then after the international break, um, we play Spurs away, uh, City away, and uh, New Boys, um, Leicester City at home. Another three o'clock game. Um, those six fixtures, Eamon. What about them? <laughs> what's the, what, what's your, what? You've got to play thirty-eight games. It doesn't matter what sequence there is. It's it's a tough it's a tough four six though, isn't it? You know, yeah, just it, it is a tough four six, yeah, yeah. But yeah, not on paper. Well, look, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to start brain aching about how many points are we going to have after six games. I'll tell you what, Man City don't. What you do is you try and be the best you can, um, but yeah. being the best you can doesn't always happen from minute one at the start of a season. So you try and get the points you can get. Uh, I'm not to make any predictions about how many points we get. Let's see what let, let's see what we do on Saturday to start with the tech from there, you know. 
Yeah, we had a great start last season against Forest, of course, on the opening day. It was terrible against um, Forest. Saka scored a screamer. Yeah, it was terrible. The second half. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. t- obviously, t- Jordan Timber's injury was a big downer. No, He's had, well, you know, was, the mood. For, 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 for stepped up in the second half when they realised they'd given us the whole pitch. It was so easy for us. It, w- it was a bit like that Villa home game, except for we had put two in. Yeah. They stepped up and we struggled to cope and we were struggling to get together. I think Arteta did admit though, um, Eamon, after that first game against Forest, it was kind of the kick the team needed, wasn't it? Like, we're not going to have it on our own, but you know, and we move, moved on pretty quickly from that 2-1, yeah? Um, John, a force, tasty 4-6 four, fixtures, isn't it? Yeah, but you might say it's tasty for us, but they're not going to look forward to playing us either. No, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you have to look at it that way as well. They're yeah. all looking at the same height. You know, we're yeah. you know, there's things around about so I say, I say, you got to play them something. Yeah, you got to play them something. So if we hit the ground running, yeah, all of a sudden, they're going to say, Oh, look, Arsenal. So, I mean, they're, 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 none of those six clubs want to play Arsenal this early in the season. Either. So, swings yeah. around it. It's a great thing to have, though, teams fearing you now, isn't it? You know, teams. <laughs> It's not about fear, it's about respect. And for a yeah, long time, I don't think they respected yeah. You know, yeah. they respect us now. They respect, yeah. they respect us now. With the Wolves game on Saturday, lads, um, I, t- I thought what Gary O'Neill done last season in his first full season yeah. was phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal, wasn't it? Yeah, really yeah. impressive. They've lost Pedro Nato and Max Kilman at the back, which I think would be two big losses for them. They seem to lose key players every summer, but um, I know Eamon was at the game towards the back end of last season. I was thinking it was just after the Aston Villa defeat, and you were saying you were really impressed with their work rate. They made it a tough day for us, didn't they? I was at both Wolves games last year, and they were, they were very impressive. A very honest team, yeah. you know? Um, and they can hurt you. Um, yeah, with wolves, I, I, I think it's um, they try and hang in, and if they get a sniff, then uh, and they start growing into a game, they can hurt you. But I, I, I'm loath to make any kind of predictions about yeah, the day of the season. Um, yeah, Jesus, John, do you remember in the early 90s, um, when we taught 90, 1991, 91, we won the league, 91 92, we made a ball to the start of the season, but we were the best team in the league, right. And then 92 93 season, we have a home game against Coventry. Yeah. 2 0 up at half five, and we lost 3 2. Oh, Norwich, Norwich, rather. 2 0. I was standing, yeah. Two, yeah, yeah, Norwich, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah so look. Oh, the open um, day pictures can be tough. Yeah. yeah. Will, you both be at the, will you both be at the game? We'll be in the bar. I'll be in the River Bar with the supporters club. Yeah. Have the other ones. I'm, I'm, I'm going to the game. Yeah. Best of luck. Should be a second day. Um, it's been a busy show, lads, for our um, season preview. Um, just to briefly mention, I know uh, a sad passing um, of an Arsenal legend happened in uh, June, mid-June. Kevin Campbell um, sadly passed away. I had Aim and Matt and Richie uh, a couple of days after the passing for a tribute show. Um, John, do you remember the great man? I remember when he broke into the side that the... I think he was 19 and 91, the second half of the season, and he scored, I think, six or seven goals or something. That that team went on to win the league. Um, phenomenal level uh, as a young player. Um, when George unfortunately started to lose his way at Arsenal, he, he he went long ball, and Kevin started to play more as a as a wide player. And the amount of criticism that I remember getting at the time was I I couldn't understand it. He's a an incredibly honest player and when you see how the fans of Forest and Everton in particular they loved him they loved him he was um I, I loved to see him as a pundit on Sky he was he, a very honest very far very very good mind on the game but I'll always remember as a 19 year old that kid coming in and causing havoc and I remember Alan Smith said I've oh, I just got 20 goals a season playing with him. All I have to do is follow him. He causes havoc wherever he goes and I just pick up the pieces. 19 years of age. Unbelievable. And then to die at such a young age. I, I'm shocked. Uh, he's the same age as myself. Absolutely shocked. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's... 
uh, it probably probably the best part of his career probably came with the Toffees, you know, he's meant he kept them he up. Legend there, there, the yeah. first black captain, um, dug them yeah. out of the more than once. Um, yeah. But, you know, when, when you've got a player like that who was respected at all the clubs he went to. Yeah. That shows the that, character that, of the man, that, that, doesn't it? Yeah. 100%. It barely was, you know, so no yeah. one has a boat. I haven't had anyone have a bad word to say that. And me as an Arsenal fan, definitely. No, I, I loved him. I thought he was... I was I was good when he left. It was the right time for him to leave, but yeah, yeah I just he, he, what a what a player, what a man, and I couldn't believe it when I heard him do it. Absolutely shocked. Yeah, it's, Absolutely. we we you know it's, it's their tough shows, as Eamon said in June. You know we've lost Jose Reyes as well four years back as well, and. Uh, what what's really yeah, just briefly what I what I said to Eamon and Matt and Richie, it's just how the whole of the football community comes together, even if it's not one of their own. You know, there's such grace. You know, mm-hmm. just it's just one big family, isn't it? You know, it's yeah, it's it's, it's just gut wrenching when you lose a, a player. You know, hey, uh, all those footballers for all their ills and perks and mercs and all that. They entertain us week in, week out. And yeah. I, my life is certainly the better for football and the players who provide us with the entertainment. That's all I'd say, you know. Yeah. yeah. We'll be here without we'll be, we'll be having this podcast without. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well said, lads. Um, and what Eamon and John and the co bring to this podcast as well, you know, um, we hope the viewers and listeners and of course. Has Michael D anything to say about this? <laughs> Michael D has um he's an Arsenal badge on actually. We can kind of get there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> uh, he wrote a poem uh, to finish this out. Like um here we go. <laughs> a poem from Michael D. Gunnar. Gather all Gunners for goals galore. We had 89 points. We need three more. If we don't do it, there'll be meltdown and holy war without Smith Rowe or Kivior. Good night, all Gunners. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice the way he scrapped Go United for Arson, the proper president. <laughs> and um, on that note, <laughs> um, for our first week now, it was really happy there was no meltdowns on it. But um, <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, no, I think someone needs all their uh, Eamon's medication. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, the cans of beer Moretti is just calming them down just a little bit. <laughs> um, no, it's been um, it's been been a busy for show as always. Um, you can catch a show on the Dublin Arsenal YouTube channel. When um, big shout out to Martin Zumbel who um puts all this together at the end, and on Spotify as well. Um, you can catch us there. Um, you'd see us throughout the season. Um. So from us for tonight on show one, thanks to John. Thanks for coming on, Paul. Fabulous. And to Eamon Donnelly, as always. Come on, you Gooners. Yeah. Let's get this season started. Yeah. Okay. See you guys. Take care, lads. Bye. God, it seems like a thousand years ago. I fought my way out of that cave. Became Iron Man. Realized I loved you. I know I said no more surprises, but I was really hoping to pull off one last one. There is no room for error in this title race. The world has changed. None of us can go back. All we can do is our best. And sometimes the best that we can do is to start over. Where the fence is for shot! Ryan! Oh, God, I'm sorry! Trussell scores! Get there's the chance and there's the goal! I saw all these people die. A dagger to the heart of Arsenal! I keep telling everybody they should move on. Some do. Us. Arsenal might. Arsenal just might. Even if there's a small chance, we owe this to everyone who's not in this room to try. And Arsenal are running right at here. We will. 
whatever it takes. Oh, 